I'm on a journey to get better, and I want to do it with you. And I'm not just focusing on physical health. I'm focusing on everything, emotional wellness, spirituality, finances, relationships, and so much more. Every week, it will be my personal goal to bring us, the world's leading healers, experts, and game changers, to share groundbreaking secrets and tips to getting better in all areas of life. Getting better isn't easy, but it's a whole lot easier when we can do it together. Welcome to Better Together with me, Maria Menunos. Welcome back. Happy Monday, everybody. Happy Monday. Thank you. I mean, I'm just sitting here alone. I'm just making sure people are around. (laughs) Meanwhile, I'm sitting here thinking as I'm doing all my crazy dancing in the intro, I hope you're cutting away to Stephanie's crazy dancing. So it's not just me like doing all this stuff, Stephen. Oh, they don't see our crazy dancing. Should I start Uh, letting them see it? Oh, yes. That's why we have 18 cameras in here. Yes. I want my crazy dancing on display with your crazy dancing. So I'm not the only crazy dancer. I can start giving them a window to our crazy Crazy dancing, if you would like. Mm-hmm. They they don't know how we raise the roof. They've never seen it before. Well, we got to get amped before the show. Well, there you go. Now you you can make it happen. I can. <laughs> <laughs> I've got I, the power. I don't know if you really want them seeing us <laughs> while we're doing the intro. <laughs> I think they need to see all of our hands in the air. This is like a rush of Monday energy that will be coming at them full blast. Yes. Right. Yes. Completely. Because everybody's in Monday, Monday. Because when Maria Days. says happy Monday, everybody, silence. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <We're> like, <laughs> You're, they're either thinking Monday, Monday, or they're thinking it's just another manic Monday. Monday. Oh, oh. Wow, you just yeah. switched tones so well. And <laughs> time periods. <laughs> We need like a rapper to come up with a Monday song so we can yeah. get to like the new generation. Kanye's got to be like Monday, Mon Yay. That's a good one. Oh, you know. You should pitch it. I should. Uh, our quote of the day it doesn't matter how slowly you go as long as you don't stop. And that's by Confucius. That is a great S- quote. Love it's that. similar to like Mr. Bob Backlund, famous uh, champion wrestler. He always says, uh, you never lose unless you quit. And that's one of my favorite, favorite quotes. I love that. You never lose unless you quit. But he says it like this. You never lose (laughs) unless you quit. (laughs) That's perfect. Yeah. It's so true. It really is true. Uh, Welcome back to the show, guys. Thanks for being here with us. Thanks for supporting us and, and being on this journey with us as we all get better together. Um, today we have an amazing show lined up for you. We have practicing psychotherapist, Tammy Velicenti, who's an expert in trauma and addiction recovery. She works with clients nationally and internationally and has renowned success using EMDR to treat anxiety and trauma and panic. Um, she's got over 20 years of experience. She actually practices in my home state of Massachusetts yeah. in the Berkshires, Um, and she has helped create life-changing results for survivors of rape and sexual assault and, and so much. I mean, the statistics on this was insane that I was reading. It was like a massive amount of people. You probably have the statistics in front of you, but the people that were healed from PTSD, from these traumatic events in just a few sessions. And I've heard about this in LA a lot, you know, cause LA, we're always at the forefront of everything. And, you know, it's like, oh, everyone's doing EMDR or whatever, but I understand it now. I didn't get it before. Um, and that's why I'm so glad that we're bringing this to everyone today. Cause I'm bringing it to us too. Like you yeah. were blown away by it and you're like, I know so many people that need this. I'm sitting there. I'm like, I know so many people that could benefit from this and it as makes well. Sense. It, I mean, Tammy will get more into it, but I, it makes complete sense that your mind could heal in a similar fashion that your body can and just heading it that way with the approach. But to your point about the studies that have proven it, there's been more than 30 positive controlled outcome studies that have been done on EMDR therapy. Some of the studies show that 84 to 90% of single trauma victims no longer have post-traumatic stress disorder after only three 90 minute sessions. These are 30 different studies that have proven this crazy. And the other one, it was like six sessions yielded amazing results for multi traumas, I believe. Yes. Um, Oh, yes, it was. Um, 
77% of multiple trauma victims no longer were diagnosed with PTSD after only six 50 minute sessions. Yeah. So you think of like even returning soldiers who yeah. have been in, you know, one of those God awful situations doing EMDR could be completely game changing for them. And I wonder if they're using it, um, as much as, uh, you know, it should be, it should be, it would be really this cool. This is a know. 77% of combat veterans were free of PTSD in 12 sessions. See, and that should, if that's, if that's the, the statistics, it should be used all the time because the suicide rate is insane. Yeah. Think it, of, by the way, think of 12 sessions is what it takes to heal a returning soldier from an incident because they're on complete fight or flight all day, all night, in a war zone, and 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 just the level. If other people with horribly traumatic events in their lives have been healed in three, imagine to have to have 12, what they go through. What's really crazy, too, is that, like, a lot of, a lot of returning soldiers don't realize they have PTSD. Um, I have a friend who was, who was in the military for, for six years, and he came back home. He wasn't, <coughs> he didn't feel like he had PTSD. He didn't feel like he was having like episodes or anything like that where he couldn't handle like loud noises or anything. But after like two years back home, he like started realizing that he was getting angry at things he never used to get angry for. He was getting frustrated by things he never used to get frustrated for. And he went to a therapist and it, it's like a subconscious thing mm. that a lot of people don't even realize. So I think it would be very interesting for the U.S. government to, you know, explore an actual like rehoming process where it's like, OK, you've, instead of just shipping home, it's like, all right, you've shipped home. But now here is a process of different. Yeah, this is your you entry part of your entry package, your yeah. reentry package. You have to do some EMDR just to be safe because the the suicide rate in the military is really um, depressingly high right yeah. now. It's really sad. Yeah. I think this is a a really interesting solution for us to really dive into and see um, and, and see more about, because I, like I said, I've heard about it. I've, I remember hearing someone I know's wife was doing it. Um, I don't know if I can mention names, so I won't, but you know, you just, I, I didn't have much exposure to it. And when I was doing the research, for this segment, I was blown away. I was like, oh my goodness, how did I not know about this? But that's why I love the show, because <laughs> now we know. And when you know better, you'd get, get better. better. Thank you, people. I, They're finally awake with me. I can't wait for this one to come <laughs> out. I can't wait for this episode yeah. for people to hear it because there's so, like you said, there were so many people I'm already like, I gotta send it to them, 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 because I need mm-hmm. them. It's like a nice way to be like, opening up their brain to a new form of therapy that they might have not thought of. Yeah, it's funny. So my friend Judy, who I've told you about, who's been kind of like becoming my surrogate spiritual guide. (laughs) Um, I dubbed her a spiritual guide last night. She's like, oh my God, that's the name that came into my head just earlier today or something like that. I was like, yeah, no, you're like a spiritual guide. You're not, that's what you are. Anyway, um, she was saying that Um, as I fill myself and as I kind of heal myself, I heal the collective. So if you think about it, what we're getting to do on this show is as we're filling ourselves, we're filling the collective. So when you're excited to now go pass this on to so many different people, think of the amount of people we're able to touch. And if you are listening right now, which I know you are, yay, (laughs) um, we're all surrogates to this. So you have your mini responsibility, not to burden you in any kind of way, but we're all getting this information to help ourselves and then help others. So that's why I always say if something has touched you or moved you, share it with someone else. You know, if it's an episode you think would be beneficial to someone in your life, share it with them because the more people that know better will get better. And now you're a part of their health journey and their, you know, spiritual journey or whatever it is, their journey to get better. So, um, you know, we're a, we're a, a small tight army of getting betterers. <laughs> and so let's let's keep uh, let's keep recruiting people that that you know want to be a part of this journey and and help them along the way. So it's it's a pretty cool 
pretty cool thing, I think. So awesome. Yeah. Really exciting. Um, and we have a lot of amazing shows coming up. So um, hopefully we'll be able to help you guys get through the holidays. Because <laughs> for some piece. people, some people, the holidays are not fun times. It isn't. Um, I know that from firsthand experience. And so they are upon us. And, um, and then there's, of course, the stress for the other people who do enjoy them. And so, you know, every Monday we'll be here for you guys. So without further ado... We are going to get to our interview with psychotherapist and EMDR expert, Tammy Villasenti. Um, well, thank you for joining us via Skype. And um, we're so excited to learn more about EMDR. And uh, in my quick research, I was just blown away at the statistics because I hear about it here in Los Angeles. And I know Los Angeles is usually kind of the forefront of some of these different modalities. You always hear people here kind of first and then it starts to spread out. But I didn't realize how successful it is in helping people pass through trauma. So tell us about your work and how you got into this. Um, so I've been an EMDR clinician for, I don't know, probably close to 20 years. Um, when I, I think we'd have to go back to Needham when I was a little girl, um, when I decided I really felt called to this at a very young age, I wanted to be a child psychologist and, um, flash forward 20 some odd years, shiny new graduate degree. I really wanted to help women. And I found myself working at and running um, a couple of rape trauma programs. And it was there that I had this dear friend and supervisor who said, you know, really want you to take this training. EMDR had no idea what it was. It was probably five to seven years new then. There were really no empirical studies. If there were, there were maybe a handful. So I ended up in a room, in a conference room, in a hotel in New York City with 300 colleagues being trained in EMDR, not really understanding what it was. But sitting in a room every day with rape and incest survivors um, and knowing the struggle and then bringing it back to them and seeing the difference, all of that was really, really amazing. So to be able to go from not having the EMDR and using traditional therapy, CBT, behavioral, even some yoga at times, different body modalities, um, nothing worked like EMDR. Wow. There were times in one to three sessions, symptoms of PTSD were gone, people were functioning again. Wow. So that back then it was really anecdotal. You know, what are we seeing in our offices? So what, what do you think called you at such a young age? Did you go through a trauma? Hmm. No, I can't say I went through any specific trauma, but I, oh, I've been saying for the last many years that trauma was my first love. I can't explain it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was just meant to be. Sometimes the universe provides. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, so explain to people what EMDR is. So EMDR is a type of therapy. It stands for eye movement, desensitization, and reprocessing. Um, and that sounds like a bunch of gar garbly gook, I know. Uh, but it's a ho really holistic therapy that combines your thoughts and memories, your emotions, the sensations in your body, and the negative belief about yourself. That combined with a bilateral stimulation Back when EMDR was first discovered by Francine Shapiro, she discovered that when she moved her eyes back and forth that the material that she was thinking about became less disturbing. Later on, it's now we know it's any bilateral stimulation. So tapping back and forth, sounds in your tones in your ears back and forth, vibrations back and forth in your hands, or eye movements back and forth. And so what does that do? Things, well, it's interesting. Um, we don't know a lot about the brain to know exactly what it does, but we do know that when we're in REM sleep, we are also moving our eyes back and forth. Oh, it yeah. really heightens processing and it helps ground the material. So that's why they call it REM, rapid eye movement, right? Exactly. exactly. Oh, duh. <laughs> and that's when we're dreaming and processing material and storing it away. Huh. So when you think about trauma, trauma is not um, stored like typical memory. Oftentimes it's not stored at all. It's why people say, you know, I'll ask you, will experience something traumatic? Yes, and I, I'm experiencing it every day. So is it EMDR, just kind of floating on top of everything? Exactly. That's a perfect way to say it. Exactly. Wow. 
and then by and then EMDR therapy by um, connecting it to emotions, sensations in your body, negative beliefs. It helps to ground and store that information. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what is a typical session like, like a first session with someone? Mm. First session is, is like any other first therapy session. Um, really t- history taking a lot of people will ask, you know, so what, what are, what are the issues? What's the presenting problem? I'm actually not interested in the presenting problem at all. I know it sounds a little strange, but I want my eye on the prize. I want to manifest the, um, our goals, uh, and start doing that as soon as possible. So my first question or the, the most important question in the first session is, um, how do we know when we're done with our work here? What's different? What feels different? What, do, what, what What's different about what you're experiencing in the world, in your body? Um, so in the first session, yes, history, um, goals, um, some education about EMDR. And then second session, we may be talking about uh, resource installation. We may do a safe place exercise, which helps you get used to the EMDR process. So we would target a safe place with all of the positive emotions and the positive sensations in your body. And it would look like a typical EMDR session with the bilateral stimulation um, and with the processing, but with a focus on, on the positive. And once the person is, is resourced, and that may take a few sessions or it may just be one session depending on the individual, then we get into the processing of more, more difficult material, really what you came there for. Are you using different versions of the bilateral movement for different people or is it are you just using the eye movement are you using tapping on sides or ear sounds good question that really depends on right it depends on the person's comfort so there is a device that looks like a walkman um that has headphones and then buzzers in your hands some people choose just to listen to the the buzzing back and forth some people choose to just hold the buzzers um, I work some, with some other people. Um, I work with people internationally and nationally. Um, so they may order that device or a lot of times they may just do the tapping back and forth. They find that just as effective. Um, Literally just uh, tapping your own shoulders, basically. Yes. As you're thinking about the trauma. Yes. Well, that, that's, I think a little, I think a little oversimplified, but yes. So you think about the, like, the question I'd ask you around a specific trauma is if that trauma was a movie, what frame of that movie represents the most disturbing part? Mm. So as you think about that, then you tap back and forth and you do that for maybe 20 seconds to a minute, minute and a half, depending on how long you want to process. And then you come out and then you report back to me what came up. Oh, I really got a hot flash. I'm really enraged. um, Or I have X, Y, and Z memory. Um, And then we're going to intervene just a little bit. Mostly we're going to let your body and your brain do what it needs to. You go back in noticing the rage you feel and the hot, the heat in your body and then see where that goes. And it goes back and forth like that. Wow. Yeah. I'm not trying to minimize the, the process. I'm just trying to show kind of all of us how, how simple it can be in a sense to move through something that's so traumatic because it feels like it's something that could be unhealable, like you can't get past it and or whatever it is. So my next thing is, is who is this most ideal for? Mm, great question. So um, I'd say most people it works for. We've been talking a little bit about trauma, but it works for a whole host of other things. So let's say, for example, um, you reached out and said, well, I've been dealing with these real negative feelings about my mother. Whenever I'm on the phone with her, I just, I can't stand her. She comes to visit. I can't wait till she leaves. Okay. Um, EMDR would be really helpful in that case as well. So we might target um, an incident that you've had over the last couple of years where you were with your mom or you had a phone call and you got all these feelings and sensations. So we just follow that through the session, and don't you know it? It goes back to when you were a child, let's say, and um, maybe you were a latchkey kid, and you felt alone and not seen. And we process a, a lot of that, and um, and that will have the impact in the in the car, in your current relationship. Wow. So right, right. So even in relational therapy, you know, all of that may be stored as history may be playing out in your current relationship, you don't know where it's coming from, but it's really little Maria that's reacting. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. Well, because I'm trying to figure out, I mean, I know that from my research, you know, rape victims, sexual assault, returning soldiers with PTSD, but you know, there are so many of us, everyone's in pain. Everyone has some level of suffering, whether it's your mom was diagnosed with brain cancer. That's a trauma, right? Absolutely. Um, or whether, um, you've lived in fear because you felt unsafe as a child and Mm -hmm. that has built up and, you know, I'm seeing it so clearly now, literally like a covering because Mm it, it shades everything you do in your life. It does. It does. I worked with someone years ago who used to say my trauma affects the way I brush my teeth. Oh my God. (laughs) Wow. Right. Because it's not in the past. It's not in the past. Yeah. I worked with someone who, who helped me get through a little of it where he said, he's like, what you have to understand is you're not, not safe now. It's like, like the double negative. He's like, Mm -hmm. little Maria wasn't safe. Mm-hmm. but that's not who you are anymore. And it yes. did connect, but yes. I'm still, I mean, if someone taps my shoulder, I jump to the moon. Of I still course. have such reflexive, like fear and just, mm-hmm. you know, I'm always, mm-hmm. I'm always like on edge and nervous and, yes. and yeah, fearful that something's yeah. happening or going to happen. Yes. Yes. And I think what you experience is what most people experience, which is I understand it. It makes sense to me. And I'm still reactive. I'm still having difficulty sleeping or I'll still jump if you touch me from behind. Yeah. All of that because because it's literally, you know, um, it's literally stored in your body on a cellular level. Yeah. And and when you when you process it in a holistic way using your body. Um, and there's other ways to do it as well. You know, P.E. will take care of it. But that's a lot of homework. What's um, P.E.? EMDR. Um, it's exposure, exposure, hmm, drawing a blank of that, something exposure, um, another trauma therapy. Okay. And, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of homework and there's good going. I think you might even have to, um, record yourself talking about the traumatic event from start to finish. Mm -hmm. Um, and people are less likely to finish the treatment because of the outside work. Yeah. I I think it takes more sessions. I wonder why. I'm sure at some point you started with the event and now Mm -hmm. you've shifted to what result you want with your patient. Mm -hmm. Right. And focusing on that, like if it was me, Mm -hmm. you would say, you know, what's your result that, you know, what are we working towards? And I would say, I don't want to be scared every day. And Mm -hmm. so what was your thinking on that? And is that what happened? Did you shift from the event to that or were you always on the result? Um, I think from the beginning, what's interesting is you'll see, so, so let's take a traumatic event, for example, um, say the target is, uh, a, a, I was, um, you were, you were almost abducted, say an attempted abduction. Yeah, that's abduction. happened. Is that's that, happened. Okay. <laughs> a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh, that sounds horrific. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the focus is the worst part of that event. And the negative belief about yourself, let's say the negative belief is, um, I'm not safe anywhere or I'm not good enough or I'm not worthy, something along those lines. Um, we also want to look at the positive. What do you want to believe about yourself when you look at that event? That I'm strong enough to survive it and, and yeah, Yeah. and get out of it if something was to happen. Yes. So we process the negative going in around the worst part of that event and then after one to three sessions, six tops, it wouldn't take that long. Um, you'll get to the place where the event feels distant. You don't see it as well. You're not feeling it. And that negative belief has turned into that positive, in which case we would install the positive. So we bring up that event again, which you can't bring up fully anymore. And then we install the, I am safe. I am okay. Oh, wow. I got out of that. I just had a little mini breakthrough, which is so funny. One of the times this happened was my parents, we were all in the mall and my parents went into, I think it was like a Marshall's and I really wanted to go to the pet store because I just loved animals. So they actually let me and my brother stay at the pet store. And this guy came and he grabbed me by the arm and started to pull me and my brother screamed. And I think that's probably why I'm terrified to be alone now. I don't like going anywhere alone. 
I didn't realize why, but yes. it was the only time I was away from my parents and that happened. And the other time it happened, mm -hmm. I was alone as well, walking down a street mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's so crazy. You, you have effectively learned to not be alone because bad yeah. things happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Now I have a German and shepherd, so I feel safe. And when I'm alone, I'm so happy. <laughs> Yeah. I just discovered that this <laughs> summer, Tammy, I was home alone. Oh, my husband was away and I was like, wow, this is a great feeling to just <laughs> be completely in silence and do whatever I want because I had someone to keep me safe. My dog yeah. literally will yeah. eat anyone that comes near me. And so that's, that's so funny. Wow. Mm -hmm. well, I love that you found a way anyway. Yeah. Well, God sent With him to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was sent mm -hmm. to me. So what do you typically tell your clients in terms of how many sessions it will take for each kind of varied trauma? Does it change? Like, do you know off the bat how long you think it'll take? Mm -hmm. I could know off the bat, depending a little bit about their history. Um, if they have um, a history of complex trauma, childhood trauma and additional trauma in adulthood, that was, um, that will take a lot longer. Um, although I will tell you, Yes, it will take longer, but you'll have relief within one to three sessions. Wow. To fully process, yes, it'll take a, long, a little longer. But if you have a one-off trauma, a dog bite, um, if you were uh, in a plane crash and survived, but no history of other trauma, um, meaning, you know, big T trauma, then you want one to three and, and done. Wow. And does it last forever? It does. Wow. Yes. Yes. There's no undoing of the, of the progress and the lack of symptoms. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. explain to people a little bit about the research behind this, because we started giving a few statistics earlier, um, mm -hmm. that there were over 30 studies that showed how, uh, impressive EMDR is, but I'm sure you have even better statistics than us. Mm. I think there's probably hundreds of studies out there. I mean, a few that really stand out for me are, I think more recently there was a study done that compared a placebo, an SSRI, like a Prozac, um, and EMDR. And initially, SSRI and EMDR were both effective. But once the person came off of the SSRI, the symptoms returned. Mm -hmm. EMDR was effective beyond that. Wow. Um, and there's also studies uh, that that back EMDR using um, for people with phantom limb pain, um, generalized anxiety, performance enhancement, those sorts of things. Yeah, and are doctors using this more? Is is the Western medicine world coming this <laughs> way, or is it still just kind of isolated in its own? I'm, I'm, well, I'm seeing it more and more now. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm friends with a lot of doctors in the area and nationally, and I, I, I am getting a few referrals from them. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't want to bash the healthcare system. Of course. But I think that the, I get I it. The, right, I think that the, I think the first, um, I think that the first line of defense typically is medication. Yeah. And, um, when people show up in my office, I'm going to use everything else in our toolbox before we get to that place. Yeah. Um, and sometimes medication is really effective as a conjoint um, therapy, and then at some point you won't need it anymore for the most part. Yeah. But I like to avoid that. Um, so I think it's happening more and more, but not nearly what we need it to be. Yeah. How long is a session typically? Um, well, it's funny. I think most EMDR therapists are doing 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a 60 minute gal. Uh, I feel like that's usually plenty. If someone is in a difficult spot toward the end of a session, I may get, I may go over. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think 60, 60 minutes has really been sufficient. Sometimes an hour and a half can be particularly stressful Yeah, just to, to stay in that, at least for the first, um, session of a target. I also wonder is there a certain person that is more susceptible to this? Like if, if you have someone who really believes this can help them, is it, mm -hmm. it, it you know, does the, the person's personality play into the result at all in this? Or can you have someone who's completely, you know, <laughs> questioning it and, and maybe perhaps even negative, just forced to try it by their wife or something? Are you right, seeing results right. with, you know, all kinds of personalities? 
I, I am. And I love that question because, you know, whenever <laughs> someone walks into the office and says they're skeptical, I do a little dance. Mm-hmm. I said that, you know, that's great. You know, it's good to be a little skeptical. You know, you always want to question new things yeah. and nervous and excited and hopeful. Um, but I think a skeptic is definitely my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and then I like to hear, you know, after session two or three, well, you know, this is happening and I'm feeling a lot better and I'm, you know, I'm sleeping really well, but you know, it might not be the EMDR. It could be this. <laughs> I know. I thought, okay, that's fine. Let's wait and see. Yeah. That's so funny. Our resident skeptic, Stephen Lemieux, in the booth, I was thinking about it. I'm like, if he and I walked into your offices, like, I'm super open. I, uh-huh. But I have my skeptical side because I'm a reporter, so I'm always digging and always mm-hmm. looking. I'm not like a total, like, dive in kind of person. But, mm-hmm. you know, I have a healthy level of skepticism. I think skepticism is great, though, because, like, if if you're questioning things – then you're becoming more educated on totally. the subject before you dive in. And I actually really like this. I think yeah. psychology is so interesting because there is a valid connection between the mind and body. And I'm more skeptic, skeptical of spiritual and like metaphysical things. But when it comes to this, like it is amazing how different techniques can completely change and rewire your brain yeah. to, to deal with trauma and be able to function in everyday life. And I've seen people who have gone through different processes who could not be out in public. They couldn't be in crowds. They couldn't go to a fireworks show for 4th of July. Mm -hmm. And after, you know, they took years of different treatments. I I don't think they tried EMDR, but uh, it was really amazing seeing how the different techniques let them be in public and let them experience 4th of July and fireworks and things like that. Yeah, no, I think think it's great. I wonder... I wonder, that actually just sparked another thought in me. I know that it works for people with anxiety, so I'm assuming just straight depression as well, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I think I think straight depression, as, as oh, it's hard for me to see anything through the, not through the lens of trauma. Yeah. Right? So even when I said, if someone's coming in, I have difficult a relationship with mother, my mother, this is reaction, I'm seeing it through the lens of tra- trauma. Um, so when you say straight depression, I'm also looking at that through the lens of trauma. Mm-hmm. I see a lot of the of the DSM, you know, the Diagnostic Statistical Manual, as a result, and all those diagnoses as a result of our normal reactions to trauma. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I also wonder if you could explain, there was something we were reading, stuff. I remember you were telling me about it this morning again, is when the body is hurt, right? Mm-hmm. Like the body is going to send healing signals and, and cells to that area and that the brain is no different. Can you explain that concept? Steph? So from the EMDR website um, that gives kind of like information on what it is, it says that EMDR therapy shows that the mind can in fact heal from psychological trauma much as the body recovers from physical trauma. When you cut your hand, your body works to close the wound. If a foreign object or repeated injury irritates the wound, it festers and causes pain. And it um, relates this back to how the mind works with trauma. And that's kind of the basis of some e- of the EMDR therapies. Yeah, that the brain is basically healable as well it's like it's an yes. organ right yes, yes. so why yes. can't it be healable <clears throat> it and, and it and it and it is um rather than just I suppressed think... <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like don't feel let me give you a pill right. don't feel which i know that there's a time and place i have a friend who's in a situation right now and i mean it's critical and so i'm like we might need to do something just to keep you safe for a little while while we come up with a plan and it was so funny that this is what I was just exposed to in the last couple of days, because thank God Gabby Bernstein told us about you. Um, And this is probably exactly what he needs, because this is a person who dealt with a bipolar mother, watched her try to kill herself, watched his sister try to kill herself. And he's in a lot of deep pain right now. And it hit me. I'm like, wait, mental illness is in his family. He whether he has something or not, there's, there's an illness there or, and there's a trauma there that needs fixing and MDR would probably be perfect for him. Absolutely. And I don't don't know what the studies show around this, but, but if you're processing trauma and healing in that way, your cortisol levels are going down. Um, and I, I do have people, if they choose to do homework outside of, outside of sessions, in addition to safe place exercises, use other, 
EMDR music, which is bilateral music, um, you know, back and forth, um, to really take your cortisol levels down so you're living at a, at a lower state of, of anxiety. Wow. So is there something, mm-hmm. a resource on YouTube where if someone can't get to a Tammy in the Berkshires right now, doesn't have an EMDR person near them and they live in, I don't know, Wisconsin and there's no one doing EMDR, is there a resource they can use that can be at least somewhat helpful? Mm, that's a great question. You know, I wouldn't recommend that anyone process trauma on their own. A lot of times the trauma happened as, as a single event or on their own. And so that's, that's a piece of what creates trauma, that helplessness and the terror together. So I don't, wouldn't want them to do anything that would re-stimulate that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't think there's any harm in going to a safe place and bringing up those sensations in your body and those emotions using bilateral music. Got it. Are you, do you do FaceTime sessions? I do. No way. Oh, so that's a really great resource. Yes. Hello. That's how I see people in England and LA. Oh, well, there Florida. you go. <laughs> yes, that yes. is really helpful, actually. Is it covered by insurance, EMDR? So I think most insurance companies do do accept it now. Wow. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's new in the last few years. Um, there were ways around it before then. <laughs> yeah. So that people could get the treatment that they needed. Um, but but I think it is covered by most, most insurance companies. Oh, that's really great. I mean, mm-hmm. it took forever for acupuncture to be covered. I can't imagine that EMDR already got there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we're just getting the EMDR here in the studio. Like it's already covered by insurance. Hell yeah. Um, I wonder, um, what does a session cost in general for EMDR? Uh, I think it varies. I think, you know, if it's covered by insurance, if a therapist takes insurance, great. It's just your copay. There are, um, there's an organization, EMDR HAP, um, that trains therapists in the country, maybe outside the country around disasters and in remote areas that don't have EMDR therapists. Mm-hmm. And I think that they're, they're um, providing that on a community level. Oh, yeah. um, and I think it just varies from market to market. It can be anywhere from $30 a session to probably $500 a session. Wow. Good to know. Mm-hmm. Um, are there any misconceptions about EMDR that we're not aware of? I think a lot of people believe that it is having to re-experience the trauma. Um, And when done well, you don't have to necessarily re-experience the trauma. A lot of times you can, you can, you can see it from a distance or if you're just working with the body and the emotions, um, you can move through it that way. But it's not a, it's not a therapy where you are sort of, orally going through exactly what happened. You don't have to know what happened in order to process it. People will say, you know, I don't remember exactly. I said, you know, the, the memories and the thoughts in your mind, that doesn't matter. Let's put that aside. Tell me what your body is telling you. Tell me, tell me what you're feeling in your body and the emotions that go with it. That'll be our little window. That's where we can take a peek and that'll let us in. Wow. Mm-hmm. You do a lot of work with people in, in, in their critical kind of moments, how do you protect yourself? That's a great question. Um, sometimes I take it home. I'm not going to lie. And sometimes there's a lot of things that I hear that are really difficult. I'll rehear when I want to go to sleep or I'll pop in my mind when I'm driving down the road. But most of the time, um, most of the time it doesn't. I'm, I'm a triathlete. I, I run it off. Um, I, the ocean and the woods are my church mm-hmm. that helps. I have good friends. Um, I take good care of myself and I do my own work as well. I think that ultimately though, it's the results and the connections with the people that I'm working with that allow me to not take it home. We're, mm-hmm. we're healing together, you know, and, and in the end that's moving and, and inspiring and I, I'll take that home with me. <laughs> I love that. Guys, do you have any questions before we wrap up? These stories are so inspirational, like different people who have experienced trauma and different different moments. Is there anyone that you were like, 
very skeptical of whether or not this therapy could help them, but like through doing it, you were just amazed by the treatment. Mm. Absolutely. There's definitely, there's definitely been folks that I've worked with and I thought, okay, um, how, how are we going to move this together? There's so much at first it feels like sort of trudging through the weeds. Um, and then, and then bit by bit session by session, um, you can feel the lightness and see the changes. So yeah, I, I, I get, I get your question. And absolutely. There've been times when I'm not skeptical, but it's, it's more, it could be more difficult than most, or the trauma isn't nudging quite in the way that I expected it to. Um, but I've yet to come across anyone that it hasn't, that it hasn't really effectively changed their lives. Wow. So would you say that EMDR cures PTSD? I think I just held my breath when you said that. <laughs> if, um, if you, if anyone you in holistic, <laughs> in the holistic world gets scared with that because they come guns blazing for you. Maybe I shouldn't be asking that kind of question. <laughs> no, I love it. It's great. It's challenging. Um, I, I think if, 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 if by cure you mean that your PTSD symptoms are no longer there, that you don't qualify for the diagnosis, absolutely. Yeah. Good, because it doesn't return. Could you be re-traumatized? Yes. And, and Triggered? And you're more, right. Can you well, be re-triggered? No, you won't be triggered. Because you're past it. it. Exactly. Because you've, it's, it's, you know what it feels like? Okay, so I have uh, a computer genius that we have on our show from time to time. His name is AJ. And he taught me, he's like, Maria, your computer can never truly be wiped. I'm like, yeah, but I hit the wipe button on the Mac and it's supposedly wiped and it starts fresh. He goes, no, the only way to wipe your computer is to reprogram over it. You have to recode over whatever you did. And that's the only way to get rid of it. So to me, that seems like the brain. The only way to get rid of the trauma is to reprogram over it. So that's what you're doing. You're reprogramming the positive space over that. So you can't yes. be triggered. Yes, 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 exactly. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> wow, Perfect I just got the you. chills all the way down my body. <laughs> yes, you did it perfectly. Absolutely. You got it. You'll remember though, you'll, you'll get that what used to be a trigger and say, Oh, I remember that would happen. And then I would feel this way, but where's that old friend of mine? I'm not wow. feeling that way. Anymore. Yeah. Oh my God. I can't wait to do this. I'm going to call <laughs> you the second we hang up on Skype. I'm going to call you. I'm going to schedule an appointment for me, for everyone in my life. You're going to be busy for the rest of your life. Just taking care of everyone. I know <laughs> Steph, do you have a question before we let Tammy go? No, I just want to thank you for bringing this information. There are so many women that I know are suffering through trauma from sexual abuse that this will really help in a way I didn't think they could get the help. Yeah. So cool. Um, we always ask at the end how you are getting better every day in your own life. Um, mm. Anything? I think I, I think I touched on that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, with, uh, I'm always competing against myself when it comes to running times, swimming times, biking times, triathlon times, that sort of thing. Um, I spend a lot of time in the woods. I live in the woods here in the Berkshires. Um, and a lot of time in the water. I travel a lot. I, I do my own work um, and have done my own EMDR in the, in the past. Um, it's the only thing I find effective for myself. Wow. Um, and, I, and I say yes when the universe shows up and asks me to do things and stretch and I'll say yes. Oh, I like that. When the universe asks me to stretch. <laughs> God, that is so good. <laughs> I love that. <gasps> wow. Tammy, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and for taking the time to do this. You're, you're going to help a lot of us get better. Thank you. I really appreciate being here. I'm honored to be called one of your guests. I know you have really remarkable and inspirational people and um, I'm happy to be here. Guys, what have we learned? <laughs> that this episode needs to be spread far and wide to everyone we know. Yes. Yes. That is what I know. Honestly, how do we outdo ourselves each week? I'm like blown away every week. <laughs> I'm like, how did we not know about this?
That's why when you said that, you were like, we didn't even know. It's like covered by insurance, which is crazy. How did we not know about We've this? We've been in the dark. We've been hiding under rocks. Scam. How have Why Why haven't you told us about this scam? Uh, yes, yeah, scam. What's the deal? This is my fault. I, I blame you. This. We've I've, been doing this show for weeks now, months now. You know what? We have to thank Gabby Bernstein. Yes. Hey. So now we got to ask her, hmm, who else you got? <laughs> um, and like you said, yeah, share this far and wide, guys, because... So many of us are in pain and it's all real and no one's pain should be dismissed or ignored. And, um, you know, yes, there are different degrees of it, but um, everyone's pain is real and everybody wants healing. And if you can do a couple sessions of EMDR, a couple hours of your life to be healed and be able to move forward in a better way, I can't wait. I am scheduling it today for me and like 80 other people. Um, so Tammy may be not available for you guys, but <laughs> Maria literally just spent like 10 minutes just reaching out to all of her family. Yes. <laughs> like, this is what we need. <laughs> yeah. I have one friend in particular that I was like, this is going to cure you. Oh my Lord. I'm so grateful because everything happens at the right time. Like I have a friend who's in a critical place and I was just trying to figure out who, what, what's the solution and it's critical. And I'm like, this is this is it. In the next couple of days, we'll be done. We'll be through it. Like that's, I know, possible because of what you just said. It could be as little as three sessions. It that's could even be one. The craziest but. part of it is that I have friends who have um, suffered from sexual abuse and they were, were so desperate. They tried shock therapy mm -hmm. and things that literally black out the part of your memory that had that. And it always returns, but this is a solution that it's not painful. It's not like doing something to your brain. You're what you were saying, reprogramming yeah. it. You're putting something over it. That's, um, like s makes sense yeah. and isn't painful. We so shock therapy in the yeah. frontal lobe and that had to have hurt. Yeah. Yeah, wow. just so when there's desperate. EMDR. But this is why when you know better, you get better, yeah. right? People don't know about EMDR like we didn't. Um, I was aware of EMDR. I just didn't know much about it. And so I'm super grateful um, that we got to chat with Tammy and learn so much about it. I hope it's helpful to you guys. Like I said, think of the people that you love and share this episode with them. Uh, and anybody who does do MDR as a result of this. Share your stories with us in uh, the comments section of Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify. Let us know. You can email us at bettertogetherwithmaria at gmail.com. We'd love, love, love to hear from you. Um, as always, thank you guys for listening and for commenting. It does light up my life. We got such a nice comment. Like YouTube has been giving us life and iTunes, obviously Apple Podcasts, but we got such a nice comment on one of our Patreon posts the other day. I mm -hmm. think I texted it to you. Uh, I'm going to pull it up right now because I yeah, just thought it was really cool. Yeah, this one made me cry. Uh, Carolyn Taylor, who's one of our patrons on Patreon, said, I'm starting to soak legumes and cook them with my Sunday meal prep, and I'm also roasting veggies like butternut squash, Brussels sprouts, etc., to add to loose leaf lettuce and salads throughout the week. I've even started buying the individual size, individual size pre-made salads and throwing out the dressing and using my own for brizzy weeks. I don't write a lot online due to my own neurological issues, but I'm listening all the time, and after five years struggling with chronic vestibular migraines, I finally feel like I found my tribe with tears in my eyes and love in my heart sending you all the positive energy on this beautiful Sunday oh so beautiful I mean oh you guys kill me um we are your tribe and you're our tribe and soon we'll get to meet our tribe because yes. I am going to start putting events together where we can all connect and get together and so that is on the horizon I just got to get my mom um you know well and and then we can move forward with some of that stuff. But I am excited about that. In the meantime, Stephen, uh, will you let some of our listeners who aren't a part of Patreon yet know what we're doing? So we are building a community on Patreon because obviously, you know, Maria, with everything she went through, wanted this to be a passion project, but it just became so much more. And through it becoming more, we want to be able to do more. So we have three episodes a week right now. Uh, this episode, as well as an after show where we discuss our interviews. And then we also have a second full episode that we tape every Tuesday. So we have three episodes every single week for you guys, for patrons. 
And you know what? You get the show ad-free on Patreon. So we upload the podcast. You can subscribe to an RSS feed there, with, and we, we'll make a video to show you how to like add it onto your Apple podcast feed or your smartphone. And you'll get all of our episodes ad-free on there, and you get access to our Discord, where you can communicate with Maria, you can communicate with me and Steph, ask questions, and certain tiers can like interact with our guests and stuff like that before these shows. It's really cool, and it's been really fun to build it. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, the interaction is just super amazing. Yeah, we want to be closer connected to everybody. And, and I think the idea behind even being able to connect with our guests is really cool too. Really so cool. Um, we are excited about the Patreon. And if you want more information, you can go to patreon.com backslash join backslash Maria Menunos stuff. You put that in the summary every week, I'm sure yes. anyway. So you guys can just click in the summary. If you want to learn more about EMDR, you can just visit emdr.com. If you want to learn more about the Transformation Center, that is Tammy's center, uh, you can visit transformation-center.org, which is also going to be in the summary because we like to keep things easy for you. Yep. Um, is there anything else I'm missing? She also mentioned on the show um, another another resource, which which was EMDR HAP, and you can find that at www.emdrhap.org. H-A-P? H-A-P. Okay. Cool. And you can't forget our Apple Podcast comment. Uh, we have a bunch of them, but I just want to highlight one, okay. uh, which Yay. is Aspen from Mass says, grateful. I'm so grateful for you and your team and the amazing people and content you bring each week. I learn and grow as well as gain comfort that there are really many like-minded people out there. I've been on my own personal development journey. I've created so much happiness and health and abundance after conquering many challenges. And I'm so inspired and comforted from you and your guest stories each week. P.S. Ever since your XM radio show, I've been telling my kids to be kind and make good choices each morning when I drop them off at school. Thank Aww. you for all that you do. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Be kind and make good choices. Yes. Um, all right, guys. That's it for us today. Thank you so much again for joining us. You can follow us at Maria Menunos, at Tam CSW for Tammy Velicente, uh, at Steph Sabra, at Stephen Lemieux Photo. And remember, be nice people, make good choices, and be present.